Hello everyone, so today I'm getting to grips with this um, carport, double carport uh, roof. As I said in one of my previous videos, it's, uh, it's a four hipper, so it's a double hipped end. There's a four foot run of trusses in the middle, so it's hipped each end. Um, I've put in uh, the two hips on the other side, which I think I showed in my previous video, and I've just done this other one this morning. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and show you me fitting this last um, hip in. This one's slightly more interesting, because as I said, it's got a splayed cut in the plum cut at the bottom, and it's also got a splayed cut in the plum cut that, hand, that hangs over this uh, girder. So it's, it's, you know, it's, it's not fantastically technical. I really enjoy cutting hips, and I think it's possibly one of my favorite parts of roofing. I think it's, I like hip roofs, I like the way they look. It softens the end, you know, rather than the gable. Um, if the hip, uh, if the roofers do a nice job of running in the hips, they look absolutely gorgeous as well. So I really do like, hipped roofs I think they're, they're very nice um, so there's a couple of things to note on here um, we've obviously got a girder truss here that's supposed to be a double but I've just put a single in at the minute because it helps me nail through from the back and when when I've done it I should just slide the other girder in behind and nail it up and um, there's usually more than one uh, set of these flat top girders in these but this is quite a small roof so they've only done one which is a double so what I'm going to do is just show you how I'm going to set this corner up. It's all fairly sort of straightforward hip setting out stuff, which I've done. I've got um, the length of the hip across the end. The length of the hip end is divided by two, and then that's set back down the, the run of the main roof, and that's where your, what I call, common truss would come. And then there's a, a sort of mono truss that goes on the end, which is a sort of common mono, but in effect there. The common rafters. You have your, your common rafter in the run and then your end common rafter. I think various people call them different things. So I'm just going to show you, um, I've set those up, I'll show you how I'm going to mark this corner out now. Right, so as I said, I've got uh, my main, what, what I would call my sort of common truss, or um, that's the same as theirs, I think there's four of those. Then you've got this next truss, which is a girder truss, it's got this flat element in the top. This is a double because obviously it takes quite a lot of weight. And then this, uh, this little mono coming in the end is what I would call a a sort of common mono. Um, basically the rafter cord across the top that goes up the top there is exactly the same as the rafter cord that comes down here. Well it, it is and it isn't. Um, because there's no ridge on this one, um, these go right up to the true centre point of the, of the triangle of the roof. Whereas uh, this one has obviously had to have this this um, common rafter that goes up the top of this mono has had to have half the thickness of this material cut off it so it lines in. I know it sounds complex but when these are made they make all these raft all these rafter cords exactly the same so you know, technically that can't fit without cutting half the thickness of that off it so anyway then the other thing you'll notice is that so we have this girder here and then if i just pan down here you can see it has this sort of flying rafter tail and this has got to be cut off because obviously this is where the hip intersects um, they have to leave it on because obviously we can't put it on afterwards so we've got to the main thing we've got to try and do is, is find the line of the hip, right? We've got the line of the hip between the centre point at the top where the rafters meet and then the corner of the building here. And what we've got to do is we've got to put a line up there so that we can make a mark and cut that off. So I'll show you what I'm going to do here. Is, I think as I said, we haven't got a sort of, normally you'd have this 4 by 2 plate would come all, through, all the way through here and it would join with another 4 by 2 coming all the way, it would join with another 4 by 2 plate coming all the way through here. We haven't got that in this instance, and as you can see, this oak beam is actually, it comes past the line of the plate, and that is why we're going to have a splayed cut in the, in the, um, in the plum cut of the bird's mouth. So what I'm going to do is just show you that this is our actual striking corner point where the hip comes. So I'm going to mark up the centre point there, and then show you how we're going to end up getting some marks on there to, uh, to start marking this hip up. But more importantly first, we've got to set a string line up so that we can cut off that flying rafter tail. This is the, this is the plate of the hip tend, and this wide oak beam is the plate of the run of the roof. And where the two meet is this point, point here. This is the actual corner of the roof. So we know this is an equal pitch. So the, the hip tend is the same pitch as the run of the roof. So we know that um, this is going to be a 45 degree hip. So this is our corner point, as I said. What I'm going to do here to mark it up is just put a 45 degree line on. And then that's our center line. Now we're obviously using a 35 mil uh, hip in this instance. So what we're going to do is split that in half. So all I'm going to do is go 17.5 mil one side, it's 35 the other. Now what I do is bring those lines back down. And there you can see this, this here, 
this is now signifies our where our hip rafter comes down so what we'd normally do if we were having a normal normally a hip certainly here in the uk we we don't drop our hips we just cut um the, the width of the hip across uh, across the corner so what i'll do is put my square across there so basically if this plate run all the way through we would now cut that off and then our hip there'd be a straight or square uh, plum cut in the bird's mouth which you go up against there but because this is all exposed we're going to have a splayed cut so instead of the cut being square it's going to be splayed but what we've done now is we've got ourselves a measuring point which is here and then it's just a case of making sure that when we cut the splay we cut it going the right way now what we've got to do now is the next job we've got to try and do is set a line up that, that basically signifies the top line of the hip so that it goes across that flying rafter tail so that we can mark that and cut that. Now, what I've got here is um, I've cut this block here. Now, this block here, uh, this measurement of this block is exactly the same as what they call a height above plate of the common rafter, and I'll just show you that. Right, so here we've got a, a rafter that's coming down. We're gonna pretend this is a common rafter. It's not because it's on this girder, but it's in exactly the same plane. So what we've got here is what would normally be called a height above plate. Now, excuse the fact that these have got no um, rafter feet on them. I don't know what happened here, but somewhere uh, between ordering them and them being manufactured, they didn't leave the rafter tails on the rafter feet on here. So normally these would run through. You can also see that there's a, a chalk line here, which this, um, the edge of this um, rafter goes to. That's because this oak beam had a slight bow in, so I just pinged a line and put them to that. Anyway, I'm waffling. This this indicates the, the outside edge of the plate and then this line here which is vertical is what we call the height above plate which is the height um, above the plate to the top of the rafter so what i've done this block i showed you in a second ago that basically is exactly the same height from the plate to where the top of the rafter is so this is height above plate and this measurement has to be maintained above the plate all the way around so that the line of the roof uh, runs right even on the hip so let's take this back over to this corner and show you what we do with it over here so here we've got a block and you'll notice what i've done is got a screw in there so what i'm going to do is now screw this down uh, we're keeping to our this is the line what we said is where the, the hip line is and that's the edge of the the end of the hip or the plum start of the plum cut so we're going to line that up exactly with all those marks and then what i'm going to do is screw that down Beautiful, right, so we know that now the distance from here to here signifies uh, the height above plate, but also we know that this edge here is the outside edge of the, the hip. And the reason we're doing it on the right hand side here is because the raft that we're gonna be cutting off is on the right hand side as well. So what we need to do now is I'm gonna try and get my line. I wanna run a string line from this point, which is that the top of the hip, but also it's the top of the hip, but also the, the right hand side of the hip. I want, to, I want to now string a line from here to, a, to the point at the top where the two rafters meet, the common rafter and the end rafter. So I'm just going to cut a tiny little nick in here. I know it does drop it like a millimetre below the line, but you know, we're not going to be splitting hairs here. It's a hip roof with you know, concrete pan tiles on. So I'll do that and then we'll go up the top and show you where the line is for the top. So what we're going to do now is going to go up to the, the top where these uh, two common rafters meet. So you'll see this would be what I would call uh, the end common rafter and this is the sort of the common rafter and the last common rafter in the run of the reef. So what we've got is this common rafter uh, meets in the middle here and you can see I've already done this hip. And what I've now done is I've got a small off cut of the thickness of this hip material and I've kind of I wouldn't say rough it in, but just kind of place it in the corner so it looks roughly like it's at 45 degrees. And as you'll see, I'll put a pencil mark each side. And so this signifies the, uh, the hip. It's the same thickness as the hip material. Then what I've done is stuck a little nail in on that line. So now what I'll do is I'll join the line from the bottom that I just showed you onto the top here. And then that gives us the line of the hip.
as you can see now, what we've basically got, and again, I know I said this is this is fractionally out, it's a fraction low and a fraction in, but you know, we're not splitting hairs here. So as you can see now, uh, this is a height above plate, and this line now signifies the top edge of the hip on the right hand side. So again, if I just jump up here, you can see that now this line intersects with that pencil line I put on earlier. So as we follow the line down, look, now it gives an exact point, again, because we said this line signifies the outside right hand side of the hip where this um, rafter cord will strike on it, we've now got a mark. So all we need to do now is, uh, what I'll probably do here is just put a pencil mark following that line. I might set a bevel up uh, and then put a plumb cut down here and we can cut that off. And then there's nothing to stop us marking out our hip and our hip will drop in. I'm just going to give the line a little flick just to make sure it's not catching on anything. These trusses are, are pretty consistent with those ones, so it's only just kissing it there. So just put a little mark there, little mark there, and join those two together. And then I'll just put a plumb cut on it. Once the bevel for this one's only one. Beautiful. Right, let's get that cut. Don't need this line anymore. I'll just move this board over a I just quickly explain um, why I've done that specifically. I mean, I, I did explain, but you know, you could say, well, I could have just left that longer, put a nail in the side. Why'd I have to mess about, you know, cutting it off and cutting a notch in? Um, the reason I do it is it's mainly habit. Um, most of my roofing, uh, certainly when I was sort of being taught how to do it, none of it was really done with mathematics or even roofing squares. It was all pretty much direct measure done with sliding bevels, you know, spirit levels and stuff. Um, and the reason I do it like this, again, um, this gives you an opportunity to find the hip plumb cut absolutely accurately. So as I said, the, the outside corner of that block represents the top of the hip. Um, and then ultimately where those nails are sticking out, where the two common rafters meet, that also represents the top of the hip. So what I've done many, many times, again, if buildings are out of square or out of level, and, you know, stuff's not true. You can rest the tip of the hip up on the top there, and, the, and the, the bottom of the hip on top of where has it gone? On top of the outside edge there, and then you can physically put a level up the side of the hip, and that will give you absolutely perfect hip plumb cut. I'll just demonstrate that for you. Just needs to rest very gently on the top. side of this hip rafter signifies the top of the hip, ra hip rafter when it's cut. So all I'll do is get my level, stick it on it, and there the super super accurate direct measure measured and leveled hip plumb cut. super accurate. Right, now I've got my hip plumb cut and now it's just a case of taking some measurements and getting some cuts into this hip rafter. I've nailed a small block in the same thickness as the, um, 
the hip and material just to help hook my, hook my tape on. And I know this is not ideal because I'm doing it on my own, but I'm going to now hook the tape in at the, the, the top of where the common rafters meet and I measure down to where this first um, rafter cord hits and there will be uh, a measurement uh, down to where we've got to cut the splay and then I'll carry on my measurement all the way down to where the plates are. I don't know if I'll just spin that around a little bit. Can I get all of that in? No, I'm going to have to alter that. Let's go and try something else. There, get all that in, yeah. Right, let's get up there and get, measured, get that measured. I'll just show you the where I've measured to down here. So when I brought the tape down from the top, um, took the first measurement to where that girder is. That's the third where my first birth mouse is going to be. And then the measurement that I came down to the bottom here is this point here. So we know that that is exact point, and we know that that is the this measurement uh, down from the top. So we can that's a plumb cut will be that measurement down. That is the point of the splay for the the plumb cut part of the C cut. So we, we've got those measurements now. And we can transfer them onto the hip. Right, we've got our length of hip here. This is actually about the best one of the lot for save the best for last. I've made it. Um, I've eyed down it and made it so the crown or the bow is up. I put a little cross on there. Um, I've also set, this was the mark I put on early with the level when we were setting up the hip to, to find the plumb cut. And I've set my looping square to that cut. So what it's important here to make sure is that we're working to the right side of the hip. When I mean the right side of the hip, I mean the correct side of the hip, which in this instance is the right side of the hip. Uh, because that is where our measuring points are. Uh, uh, that's where our measuring points are from. So we, it's on the right side of the hip where this rafter hits it, and it's on the right side of the hip where it hits the plate at the bottom. So it's really important to make sure that we get um, get it oriented right. So we're marking from the right side. So first thing I'm going to do is put my um, double plumb cut on the top, and that gives us something to work from because that's where we, our measuring point was uh, from the top up there. That's not the right pencil, that's what I want. Right. That's that lovely sort of compound 
um, plumb cut on the top of the hip and that now gives us our marking point to put the measurements that we made earlier down onto the hip. Put just a tiny, tiny nick in there just to keep the tape in the right place. The first measurement was uh, to the top of the raft on the girder was 882. So I put a measurement here, 882. We know that was the top of the plumb cut. So what we do now is make a plumb mark on there. And then we measured down also from the top of the rafter to the flat part of that girder. And that measurement is 88 millimeters. So we'll put that down there as well. And now we've got the point for our seat cut. So I'll mark that as well. Okay, that's the first one. And then the next one was 3777. So the same again, but this one isn't on the top of the rafter. Uh, the hip raft of this one is actually uh, at the base of the burzma, so it's slightly different. So it's 3777. So I'll just quickly show you down here. Um, as I said, the 3777 mark wasn't uh, to the top edge of the hip rafter. It was actually to the, the bird's mouth or the back of the bird's mouth. So what I had to do, you kind of have to put a little bit of a, a raking arc in here. So you can see that's 3777 over a period because obviously our bird's mouth sort of comes in here somewhere. Now what we've got to do is uh, find out our height above plate, which is... Um, in the hip plumb cut and what I'm going to use is that block that we cut earlier to help me do that. Right so I've moved you down the way hopefully you can still see it. Here's our uh, 377 mark which I said was a sort of arcing mark because it's the, the the back of the bird's mouth not the top of the rafter. So what I'm going to use here is we know we got um, uh, this is the going to be a plumb cut this is the hip plumb cut and what, what we need to do is is this is our the block I showed you earlier Sorry if I can see that, yeah. So this is the height above plate. Um, so all I'm going to do is, and again, sorry if you can't really see this, but I'm trying my best on my own. I'm going to put this this corner to the top of the rafter here. I'm going to slide it up to my the edge of my roofing square. And then basically what I'll do is slide it up until these points meet. I don't know if you can see this, sorry if you can't. But I'm going to slide it up until... The, the bottom edge of this, which represents our height above plate, as I said, and the plumb cut here come together. So in effect, what I've got, look, when I take this off, is I've got my bird's mouth. There's my plumb cut, and there's my seat cut. So now all I need to do is just extend that seat cut out, like that, and we know that this plumb cut is right. Now it's just a case of making sure that we cut the splay going the right way. And what I'll do is physically sort of almost offer this hip in just to double check. Right, I'm, I'm confident at uh, the way that my splay is going because I kind of just offered the hip up and just roughly sort of pencil marked it. So I know it's going the wrong way. You know, this splay cut goes down this way and it would be dis not disaster, but you don't really want to cut it the wrong way. So I've set my saw over to 45 degrees and I'm going to cut that out now. scaffold I'm trying to do this so that you can see it take the rest of that out with the hand I suppose we could get the square just drawing those up I'm trying to be careful on the scaffold so the uh, camera doesn't go flying. It's all going that way, I think. All right, let's just trim that bit out.
leak and put it. I'll overcut it because it's seen. Nice. Lovely. Right, on to the next one. Right, so I don't think you can see that. Where's that out of shot, is it? Right. Let's zoom that in later. So, as you can see from this one, uh, I've scribbled the direction of the splay. And we could get away with cutting a square cut on there, but I think it looks better when it's splayed, looks neater, like you know what you're doing. Um, so the splay goes the other way on this one, and this is one of those instances. Having a blade left and a blade right in this instance is really helpful because um, the blade right doesn't count the right way to cut this uh, splay here, whereas the blade left does. So we'll uh, just set that over to 45, and we'll cut that. Uh, right, set that back to there. So I'm, I'm not normally as a candidate to this, I'm just trying to do it so that you can perhaps see it. Let's see if I can get it here. Beautiful. Right, that's all those cuts cut. Let's offer it up and see. Um, as with hips, not, it may go in first time, but sometimes they just need a tiny little bit of teasing to get them in. Let's have a look. Here we go, um, really pleased with that. So if we have a look on the bottom here, look, you can see that these are the points that we measured to. Look, we've got that splayed card, I don't know if you can see down up under there, look, well, I'm completely guessing. Uh, runs out of 45 degrees, not bad there. So that's that point as we move up the roof. Um, there's a little bit, we've got quite a nice, as you can see there, it fits nicely down over the top. That's the line we marked with the string line. Um, and then we've got the measurement right down here, look, sits nice and perfectly on top of this girder. And then as we carry on up to the top, you can see that we've got a nice, I mean, these points, you know, I'm splitting hairs a little bit, look. So it all comes together sort of really nicely. So actually, you know, as anyone that cuts hips in, especially when they've got quite a few cuts in, they'll know that it's nice when they fit in first time. It's very satisfying, as I said, it's probably one of the reasons I like doing hips so much. So really, really pleased with that. That doesn't need any adjustment whatsoever. So now I'll just tack it up. Let's 
let's have another quick look at that, just to show you I'm not really pleased with that. Like I said, you've got that lovely splay cut on the bottom, sitting uh, nicely down on the seat cut. Up onto the, another splay cut, let's have a look so we can see under there. Look. Can we see that? Maybe, I don't know. Um, yeah, fitting really, really nicely down. Um, lovely cut along there, that was a cut I did by hand. Yeah, and as we move on up, we can see that cut, lovely, that hand cut I put in there. And then we've got the measurement right, maybe just a couple of mil uh, tall on the top there. Not gonna get my knickers in a twist about that. Sits down nice on top of this girder. Um, as I said, this is a, there's a double girder. There's another one to go in here, which I'll put in afterwards. We don't normally put them in afterwards, they normally be in first, but in this instance, it just helped me because it's a small roof. Uh, and then as we move on up the rafter, we have a look in the top, we can see all these points meet together. Really, really pleased with that. You know, we've got some cracking little cuts in there, look. So, yeah, absolutely brilliant. So now, what happens is, when we get back down the roof, I'm going up the other end here. What we now do is we know, we know we've got our points right at the top and right at the bottom. As we bring the camera down, you should see that all of those trusses and those top cords all come into the same plane with that hip. Well, we've got, we've got this hip and then all of the jack rafters, the trusses and the hip on the other end all come into the same plane. I mean, they are, there's, a, there's a tiny bit of up and down, but you know, that's just the um, tolerance in, in the trusses. So yeah, all in all, absolutely fantastic. And um, that hip fits an absolute treat. It's nice and straight. Um, really, all I've got to do now is uh, mark out and start cutting some of these jack rafters in. So let's get on with that. So the next job, the next job I've got to do is cut this last mono truss in. And what I've got to do to be able to do that is cut this uh, rafter cord off on the top. Now, I don't, I can't really go into it in too much detail about uh, why I'm going to cut this where I'm at. But it, the spacing of this is less than 600. So I know that I can just cut it tight to this vertical member and um, it will be in the right position. If it was a bigger roof um, and the spacing between the middle uh, common truss, mono truss, whatever you want to call it, was bigger than 600, then I would have to take some different measurements. But the reality is um, I've got to crack on here really and get this job, this job finished this afternoon. So um, some of the details might be a little bit more sparse uh, for the rest of this uh, video. So um, that's my plum cut that I put on there. And now I'm just going to cut the correct um, compound uh, jack cut, top jack cut, and then we can fit that on. And then it's just a case of literally simple uh, jack rafters, which, you, which you'd fit in a normal hip. here we've got some fixed points to work to here but we can't really alter how this truss has been made we've got our fixed point on the end here which is a we can't alter and then because I've got the bottom cord of this mono is been cut to a certain length and then that has to meet 
the bottom cord of this girder truss and be flush at the bottom which is why I screwed that piece of timber on there earlier so that's a fixed point and ultimately when we come up to the top uh, it's got to be as tight as it can against the face of this girder here and as you see here look it's slightly down there's absolutely nothing I can do about that I can't put this rafter up flush with the top of this hip here because it would make the bottom out so but again you know that is uh, well within tolerance for a roof like this even if you were putting slate on this um, there's no way you'd pick that out bearing in mind there's going to be big hip tiles all the way down here so yeah so that is all of the trusses in um, just to sort of finish off what I'm going to be doing here now, obviously as, as the eagle-eyed amongst you will know um, I've got to put metal work uh, joist hangers on all of these and then as I said there's a double that goes on this is actually a double girder so all I'll do is just ease that uh, that temporary brace off and just slide it in from this side I won't bother with the putting these get my knickers and twist about these top cuts these jack cuts on that so just slide it in and then gang nail the whole thing together so I'm going to get one of those jack rafters now and then hopefully all that's going to leave me to do tomorrow is just as I said put these girders in and then get the rafter feet sorted out in the eve detail soffit fascia and then ready for the roofers That's terrible. Absolutely cannot use that. That's rejected. Gosh. Some good ones now. So I'm going to call that a wrap uh, on this hip part of this video. Um, as you saw, I've got the hip in, went really, really well. I'm really happy with it. There's a couple of things I'm not 100% happy with, um, which I'm kind of going to show you. I think I need to check the um, 45 degree stop on my saw. So there's a pair there and a pair there that I would like to be better if I'm honest, but it's not the end of the world. You know, they should really be, be tight. Um, but you know, everything else, you know, in terms of all my bird's mouse and everything, everything else is, is pretty good um, I haven't done a full bird's mouth on here as you notice because um, basically the rafter cord of the truss was supposed to come all the way through which would have only been this 70 odd mil so it was just pointless putting a, a bird's mouth on here because I had to cut it off anyway so I'll now just block it in between here and then bring the boarding up to close that off um, extend the rafter tails the rafter feet onto these here I don't know why they came like that as I said earlier so there you go in terms of cutting a hip um, over a truss roof you know that's pretty much the guts of, of how I do it certainly um, nice and straightforward um, particularly a little bit more sort of going on really as I said earlier because he's got these splayed cuts on but that's going to look quite nice detail when all this is picked out in black against the oak when you look up from underneath that look like quite a nice detail uh, this has got open eaves on it so I'll just cut these line this through cut these rafter feet off put ply on the top close that off as I said that's why I've set that back a little bit so we put a noggin in there look and that finishes that little flush so um yeah very enjoyable it's been a, a cracking little roof this one um i'll just finish off these bits and bobs tomorrow and i may do a, another video just to just sort of finalizing it but really just wanted to do this video um really just showing hopefully um how i've done that hip i, ho I hope it's come across sort of relatively coherently it's 
it's difficult when you're trying to um, film it on your own and get particular details in and particular shots, but also at the same time in the back of the mind thinking you've got to get a certain amount of work done during the day. So um, I hope this is of use for somebody. Uh, thanks for watching.